Hello, my name's Paul Hopkins. Welcome to Spiritual Realities, where we're going to look at what this phrase, eternal life, means for you. Some people think eternal life is living forever. They're looking for ways to extend the life of their body, fitness, health, techniques, drugs, that will enable you to extend your physical life. Could we be heading for a time when your, your body continues forever? Would you even want to live in your body forever? What does that mean? What do the Hebrew scriptures tell us that we may have missed or misunderstood about eternal life? What's the difference between everlasting life and eternal life? Jesus said this, if you believe in me, you will have, you will gain eternal life. Eternal life. What does he mean? You may have misunderstood. I want to explore with you how you might access this eternal life that Jesus was talking about, and it may not be what, what you thought. It is not about some kind of religious assertion and belief. It's much more powerful than that. There's a passage in the New Testament scriptures that people often go to when they want to explore, when they want to home in and potentially put their beliefs on what eternal life is. And I believe this passage can be so easily misunderstood. You find it in the third chapter of the Gospel of John, the, the John's writings about the life of Jesus. And it's a story about a religious teacher who is confused by who Jesus is. He's stunned by the miracles, the supernatural things happening, and recognizes that the God, the creator God, must be with him, yet at the same time is uncomfortable and does not understand many of the things he's saying. He's got a framework. Our framework of thinking can stop us understanding and access things. We can hear things right in front of us, but because of the framework we have, we misinterpret. We do not comprehend. The communication is coming, but it does not land correctly. And we make wrong assumptions and wrong platforms to live from. That's the case of Nicodemus. Perhaps it's the case for many of us. He comes to Jesus at night so that he's not seen to be coming to Jesus. He's worried what people will think, we can assume. And he starts to talk about his problem with who Jesus is to Jesus. And Jesus says this, Unless someone is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. And when we hear the phrase born again, it can trigger all sorts of frameworks. We think that means I will be forgiven. Even the phrase, I will have a personal relationship with Jesus. These things are good things. But with that framework, you can miss the depths of what is being said here. Eternal life is much more than just those things. Now, here's the thing. This is not live endless life in this body as it is, by improved eating, mental health, physical exercise. It's not that. It's something other. The words used in the original languages speak of something that is other than time, super time, if you like, outside of time, or even more than that, a layer of reality that is blissful. 
a realm of reality that is outside of time, yet present now. So it's not just endless living, where some people's frame of what that would mean would be boring, tedious. Who would want to live forever? As, is, as has been sung by many a song. Why would you want endless, this endless situation to continue? It's not talking about endless life. It's talking about an extraordinary quality of life in a completely different dimension, which of course may well affect the length of life you have in this body. That may well happen, but this is something other. This is extraordinary. Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, I haven't just come to heal and heal your body. I've come to take you back to this Edenic reality. So it's a good thing to be fit. It's a good thing to eat better. It's a good thing to improve many aspects of your life so that you enjoy the time you have as well as extending the time you have. But eternal life, or as it says in Hebrew, hey, hey, olam, is something other. And the grid that many people have implies that this is some kind of religious belief that you make and then you have it. Jesus is saying, no, if you use the mechanism that he calls belief, a tying to who he is, a resting on that, if you believe in me, that is his nature, his name, his, his very essence, if you trust in him that he is, the one come to restore what the Hebrews understood as Eden. He has come to bring you a sort of life that means that overwhelms the physicality of life. If you step into that reality that he is, then you eat eternal life. Now, it's a richness. It's an essence that even now I can access, you can access, we can live in it. The sense of if you had to put it in a picture, it's a garden. If you had to put it into a feeling, it would be lying in the grass of a garden. If you had to put it into an understanding of relationship, it's closeness and comfort and a hug, knowing you're loved and everything's okay. Come and learn how to live in that. Walk with others who are exploring that. Come to a place where you don't have to be afraid to ask anything and go deeper in the journey of engaging with this life. Come to the community that's linked below. And I'll see you there, or I'll see you in the next video.